In an era where conferences are more defined by brands and television contracts than rivalries and regionalism, many point to the power levels of college football as paradigms of the true spirit of the sport. While I've already covered the MAC, a group of five conferences whose members follow this theme closely, another conference that has recently gained a reputation as a regional conference with entertaining rivalries is that of the Sun Belt. Nicknamed the Fun Belt due to the entertaining football it plays and underrated other sports, the Sun Belt standing amongst college sports fans has rapidly increased following the recent waves of realignment, with some sports pundits even posturing them as the Group of Five conference that came out of the storm the best. This is a remarkable turnaround, given that not long ago, the Sun Belt itself was in danger of collapse and was widely considered the weakest of the Group of Five, and that each of its schools are located in smaller college towns instead of larger metropolitan areas. To understand just how impressive the Fun Belt standing is, we have to go back to the beginning follow them through the NCAA's ups and downs. This is college sports' most resilient conference, the Sun Belt. The conference was born in 1976, after a few college commissioners noted the lack of a true mid-major basketball powerhouse conference in the Southeast. Under their first commissioner and former Duke head basketball coach Vic Bubis, the Sun Belt was formed with members New Orleans, South Alabama, Georgia State, Jacksonville, South Florida, and Charlotte. Each of these members had solid basketball programs with the opportunity to grow even more. Seeing an opportunity to strengthen the conference even further, Bubis added Alabama, Birmingham, and Virginia Commonwealth in 1979 to increase the league's membership to eight. Due to a horrendously small home venue, New Orleans was forced to leave the conference in 1980. Georgia State left a year after them in 1981. To fill the void left by the Privateers and Panthers, Bubis reached out to Old Dominion and Western Kentucky, who joined in 1982. The league would stay like this for just under 10 years. But it soon became apparent that the members of the conference were not all on the same page. With their first commissioner and Bubis retiring near the beginning of the 90s, athletic directors and presidents of most of the universities did not see eye to eye with the new commish, Jim Lessig, and had their eyes set on more prestigious or more localized conferences. This came to a head in 1991, when the conference almost died for the first time. Every member except for Jacksonville, South Alabama, and Western Kentucky announced their intentions to leave and join other conferences. In a desperation move, the Sun Belt merged with another Southern conference, the American South, and took on their members, Arkansas State, Arkansas Little Rock, Central Florida, Lamar, Texas Pan American, Louisiana Tech, Louisiana Lafayette, and a return of New Orleans. Still just a non-football conference, TV money proved to not be the greatest. And after a few disagreements and only one season as a member, UCF would leave for greener pastures. It's at this point where conversations about adding a football league began to enter the boardroom, more often and with higher volume. To survive as a mid-major conference in the 90s, the Sun Belt either had to play phenomenal basketball, like the Big East, or do what the Big East had done before them and add a football league. Seeing the inevitability of this move, Jacksonville, Lamar, and UTPA decided to leave the conference in 1998, with the new Florida International joining. Up to this point, as a non-football league, the conference had enjoyed consistent regionalism, with all of its schools being located in the American South. But 1999 brought the addition of the Denver Pioneers to the conference, far and away their furthest member, and a precursor to the mountain outliers the conference would later also provide asylum to. From 1977 to 1999, the most common regular season and conference tournament champion was South Alabama. The 1977 Charlotte 49ers made it all the way to the Final Four in their first season as a participant, UAB saw an Elite Eight in 1982, and Western Kentucky made it to the Sweet 16 in 93. On the women's side, Old Dominion won a national championship in 1985. But the idea of being the Southeast's prime mid-major basketball conference never really came to fruition outside of those teams, as most conference champions didn't make it past the second round of the NCAA tournament. If the Sun Belt wanted to survive as a mid-major conference and avoid any more significant ejections, it was going to have to evolve. Fast. By the turn of the millennium, the push to add a football league became overwhelming. As Louisiana Tech left to join Conference USA, the final preparations were being made for the Sun Belt to start its first ever football season. To fill out its roster of football playing teams for its first season in 2001, the conference added New Mexico State, North Texas, and Middle Tennessee State, as well as UL Monroe and the far-flung Idaho as football-only schools. 
Seeing two Mountain Time teams in Idaho and New Mexico State and deciding to further strengthen that arm of the conference, Utah State was added as a football-only member in 2003, technically giving the conference four Mountain Time Zone members, with Denver being a non-football member. A year later, the conference strengthened its football repertoire by adding Troy State, who would change its name to Troy officially in 2004. Troy's history as a former FCS power joining the Sun Belt led to other schools considering doing the same, following significant amounts of football success. One HBCU that almost made the jump was Florida A&M. The Rattlers, under head coach Billy Joe, were a national FCS powerhouse in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference by 2003. They were consistently drawing 70,000 fans to the Florida Classic, the rivalry game with Bethune Cookman, and their consistent success led to money flowing into the Rattler Athletic Program. Joe began to push for the program's ascendance into Division 1A, the Big Boys, where their most likely landing spot would have been the Sun Belt. The Rattler Athletic Department was happy to oblige. But in the process of the move, some transfers were noted as being ineligible due to NCAA rulings on FBS to FCS transfers no longer applying to FAMU, seeing as they were now FBS, and the team stumbled in 2003 to a 6-6 record. Still without an invitation to the Sun Belt, or any conference, the Rattlers remained a Division 1A independent in 2004, getting ruled by many of the teams they played, and they moved back down to the FCS ranks. Joe was fired soon thereafter, and the Rattlers' bid to join Troy in the Sun Belt fell through. While Troy became an all-sports member in 2005, the year also saw the departures of New Mexico State, Idaho, and Utah State to the WAC, a conference that better suited them regionally. To stay at eight football programs, the conference added Florida Atlantic, already inside its regional borders, as a football-only program. The year after that, in 2006, UL Monroe expanded to full membership. By this point, the conference had reached its next semblance of stability. With Western Kentucky moving its football program up to Division I FBS in 2009, the Sun Belt was the perfect landing place, seeing as the Hilltoppers were members of the conference for other sports. 2010 saw the troubled New Orleans leave again, and Denver soon followed them in 2012. South Alabama, who had recently started a football program of their own, followed Western Kentucky's lead and brought them up to the Sun Belt from the FCS. But the Sun Belt was once again dealt a near-killing blow in 2013, when both Florida schools, MTSU, and North Texas announced their move to Conference USA. To combat this, the Sun Belt added another FCS team in Texas State, as well as bringing back another former school who was starting a new football program in Georgia State. To help flesh out the non-football roster with Little Rock, the conference also added UT Arlington the same year. By this point, the conference was resilient enough with enough of a brand built up to survive scares like Western Kentucky's departure in 2014 by adding FCS powers App State and Georgia Southern, as well as re-adding WAC cast-offs New Mexico State and Idaho as football-only members when their conference collapsed. They weren't done yet. With Coastal Carolina's recent success, the Chanticleers made their move up to the Sun Belt in 2016, first as a non-football program and then as an all-sports member in 2017. They had spent the last few years as a successful FCS program, following the lead of many Sunbelt programs before them, and upon their joining helped flesh out an eastern arm of the conference with Appalachian State that had previously been empty since Charlotte's departure. Idaho and New Mexico State, the sojourners from the West, had been terrible in their second stint with the Sunbelt, and their football-only contract as members of the conference was not renewed. They returned to independence in 2017. In 2018, following new NCAA rules that enabled 10-team conferences to hold football championship games, the league aligned itself into five-team Western and Eastern divisions. In the West was Texas State, Arkansas State, UL Monroe, UL Lafayette, now just Louisiana, and South Alabama. And in the East was App State, Coastal Carolina, Georgia's Southern and State, and Troy. This layout persisted for a few years, seeing as the school only had those 10 football-playing members. But with the college sports world continuing to spin, oftentimes faster and faster, change was always on the horizon. Conference USA had, at times, been the largest thorn in the Sun Belt's hide, especially in the years leading up to 2021, seeing as they had taken a multitude of the Sun Belt's teams and expansions up to that point. They were the bigger and more widely competitive conference that also shared borders with the Sun Belt, so that was to be expected. But with the American backfilling with six Conference USA teams, the CUSA itself was weakened. The Sun Belt, since losing Western Kentucky to the CUSA, had strengthened itself so well that after those defections, it was undeniably a better brand in the CUSA and was willing to take retribution. Seeing that they were on a sinking ship, CUSA schools Southern Miss, Old Dominion, and Marshall decided to make inroads toward joining the Sun Belt. 
Adding Marshall and former member Old Dominion would further strengthen an eastern branch of the Sun Belt, as well as expanding it further north into Virginia and West Virginia. Southern Miss, long a CUSA staple, would also fill in the gap between Louisiana and Alabama quite nicely, proving to be a natural fit. With the success of football programs like Troy, Georgia State, App State, and Coastal, it became apparent to Arkansas Little Rock and UT Arlington that the conference was moving away from needing them as basketball-only members. They voluntarily announced that they would leave the conference that same year. After some legal pushing and shoving to get out of the conference early, all three CUSA teams made the move to the Sun Belt in 2022. To avoid leaving the conference with an odd number of teams at 13, they extended an offer to another FCS football powerhouse waiting for an invitation in James Madison. The Dukes had consistently been at the top of their level with North Dakota State, and now being within the footprint of the conference due to the additions of Marshall and ODU, they made perfect sense to be the conference's 14th edition. They also joined after a hurried process in 2022. Some more tomfoolery with sports-specific members ensued after that, with Kentucky, South Carolina, West Virginia, and UCF joining the conference's soccer league, as well as Beach Volleyball League that includes Charleston, Mercer, UNC Wilmington, and Stephen F. Austin. But for the most part, the conference's members are consistent through all sports. If one were to theorize on the future of the conference, it's likely that they are comfortable with 14 members at the moment. Mid-major conferences with much more members, like the bloated 16-team WAC, did not last long enough and faced many departures at the end of their lifespans. That being said, the age of 16 or even 18 or 20-team conferences being possible, as seen by the Big Ten, could be on the rise, even for conferences with less money like the Sun Belt. Even with likely being comfortable at 14, the door hasn't been closed on further expansion. Western Kentucky has been notably unhappy with Conference USA and has made a push for the MAC, possibly hinting that they and Middle Tennessee could be open to a return to the Sun Belt at some point in the future. Similarly, Delaware has made it apparent that they would like to join FBS, but they would be a geographical outlier in just about any conference they're in, including the Sun Belt. Florida A&M similarly hasn't shut that door, though sadly money troubles at HBCUs have prevented many programs from moving up to Division I. Programs like the D2 West Florida could also make a move up to reestablish a presence in the state of Florida, but again, this is unlikely. Whatever the conference chooses to do, it's clear their focus on rivalries, regionalism, and good sports at the Group of Five level has proven to be a golden goose for the last five years and will likely continue to be so into the future. Their stance near the top of the Group of Five, battling with the American and Mountain West, will continue to be solidified over time. But it's the payoff of years of hard work and contingency planning, as well as smart expansion reactions in the ever-changing collegiate landscape, that truly provide an insight into the conference's resiliency. It's this resiliency that will continue to serve it for years to come, meaning we'll never be too far away from the fun belt.